half the year down, and it's been a pretty good year, better than expected, actually. But there may be some big headwinds ahead. As for the month of June, the single-family and multifamily market, well, they did what I expected. Actually, this multifamily market was pretty darn good. Well, the condo market really left me scratching my head. If you're looking to hear about the Massachusetts real estate market data for the month of June for single-family homes, condos, as well as multifamily properties, then you're in the right place. It's important to know this information if you're in the market to buy or sell a home, going to be in the market in the future, or just want to know what's going on in regards to your most likely largest investment. Let's get down to business. But first, hi, I'm Jeff Chow. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Let's start with single families. In June of 2023, we saw 4,267 single families sell for an average sales price of $821,000. Let's start this journey looking at the unit sales comparison. And the ouch continues. The June number of sales decrease amounts to 22.5% in sales from last year's 5,509 units sold in June of 2022. For the last six months, the average decrease in sales has been a decrease in sales of 22.1%. Now, I've said it on many occasions, this year-over-year -year sales levels will start to even out in the next three months or so. That is unless we see another big uptick in interest rates this fall, which I very well think could happen. Don't believe me? Then you should watch this video that I got right up here. We could easily see rates in the 8% range. So let's talk about what people really care about. Prices, right? Compared to June of 2022, home prices were up 3.7% year over year. I was pretty shocked here. This means that home prices in the state of Massachusetts were up 2.5% year over year for the first six months of 2022 versus the first six months of 2023. Near the same, it's another month of sales being down and prices being up. Let's dive into the numbers a little bit deeper and figure out what all this means. It's not the prettiest number, but it could have been worse. The 4,267 units sold is pretty much on par with the sales levels in June of 2011 when 4,170 units closed. Being a little above the sales levels of 2011 is starting to be a little bit of a trend. We've seen that on many occasions throughout the year so far. Chalk this up to now the 24th consecutive month of year-over-year -year sales declines. While that is a crazy number, it really isn't a number to be scared of as long as sales and inventory levels work in tandem, which brings us to the inventory levels for single family homes. You've seen this graph before. Well, not this exact graph, but one that looks just like this. Inventory is at a record low for the month of June. To say it another way, we have never seen inventory as low as it was in June, ever. So yes, our sales levels are down to 2011 sales levels, but our inventory is nearly seven times less. Seven times in June of 2011, we had 25,123 single family homes on the market. That is the difference between 2011 and now. That is why we continue to see the prices of houses going up, going up in a sustainable increase, but they are going up. By the way, if you were wondering which towns in Massachusetts have gone up the most or have actually depreciated, then you should check out the videos that I just did on the top 10 towns for appreciation and then the top 10 towns for depreciation in the state of Massachusetts. Now, you can see our trend line here for the inventory levels for the last month. This year is the blue line. The week of June 6, we crossed the 2021 inventory levels, hitting record low inventory, and we haven't looked back since. In the last week of June, we had 236 fewer homes on the market in the state of Massachusetts, or about 5.5%. I personally expect this number to grow and have said that I don't see inventory levels exceeding 5,000 units in the state of Massachusetts this year. I'm starting to think that we won't see them exceed 4,500 units, but time's going to tell on that one, and I'm not going to put my backside on the line quite yet. So sales were off by 22.5%, while inventory levels were down by 26% compared to last year, and off by 5.5% from the record low 2021 level. Demand continues to outstrip supply, but keep in mind that supply is being limited for the same reason that demand was, well, being limited. Interest rates. So even with the expectation of interest rates going up, then if history is any indicator, it will continue to contract supply as it contracts the demand side of the curve as well. In other words, we're going to have the same type of market dynamics in the fall, even if rates go up. The story of the real estate market revolves around analysis of both the supply side as well as the demand side of the curve. When people talk about prices going either up or down, they are just fixated around the demand side of the curve and ignore the supply side. Don't do that. I'll say this and do so very confidently. There will be no housing price correction with inventory levels this low. There may be areas where homes prices go down, think an area like the Cape. 
But as a whole, with inventory levels this low, we will not see the average home prices depreciate this year in the state of Massachusetts. And no, I have no idea what 2024 will hold for us. It's just too far off at this point. In the end of last year, in the beginning of this year, all we heard about was how prices were down from their peak. Well, what a crap statistic. You need to look at year-over-year -year stats because housing follows a trend. Unless there's an external force, of course, that's interrupting that trend. Uh, think COVID. That's a good one. So let's check in on that trend and see what's going on. Well, look at that. The trend continues. Anyone want to make any bets on where we're headed next month? Anyone want to make any bets on the so-called experts talking about how prices are down off their peak in about five or six months or so? It's the year-over-year -year data that matters, not the month-over-month. Month-over-month stats are awful and show that you really have no idea what you're talking about if you're relying on those stats to tell the story. So on to the condo market and then the multifamily market. But first, if you like hearing about the Massachusetts real estate market, then please consider subscribing. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you hitting that like button as it makes a huge difference with those YouTube gods because, well, I adjust the algorithm and push this video out to more folks. Now, for the month of June, in the condo market, we saw 1,915 condos closed in Massachusetts for an average sales price of $690,000. In April, we saw a huge plunge in sales. So let's start there. In May, we were down 21.4%, while June recorded a decrease in sales of 20.2% year over year. That's not bad. It seems that the number of sales in the condo market is stabilized, and April's decrease of 32.5% was just an outlier. The 1,915 units sold in the month of June beats June of 2020, which would be due to COVID and puts us right with June of 2012 when we sold 2,090 units. Now, ultimately, the sales levels have followed the trend of increasing through the spring months and will most likely start to decrease as we head into the dog days of summer and then into the fall market. I'd say that the sales numbers have normalized and are pretty much right on par with what we're seeing in this single family market. And this brings us to inventory levels. At the end of June of 2023, we had 2,132 condos on the market. This means that inventory is down by 19.3% year over year and 21.5% compared to inventory levels of June of 2021. I mentioned earlier that our sales levels are equivalent to June of 2012, but our inventory levels are more than three times less than what was on the market back then. This means that sales levels were down by 20.2%, while inventory was down by 19.3%. For all intents and purposes, this pretty much cancels one another out, no? This means that we should essentially have the same market dynamics as this time last year, right? And last year, we had a 12.3% increase in sales prices year over year. So how is it that sales prices went down by a half percent for the month of June of 2023 when compared to June of 2022? You heard that right. Prices went down. So what gives? Like I just said, the average sales price of $690,000 represents a half percent year over year decrease in the average sales price for the condo market. There is no doubt that the condo market is weaker than the single family market. And this means that we have seen home prices up year over year for four out of the last six months in 2023. Year to date, prices have increased in the state of Massachusetts by two and a half percent. Still a very respectable gain and not anything I'm re ready to throw up a caution flag quite yet. Now, what really made me do a double take, if not a triple, on the data was what I saw on the yearly trend. June of 2023 broke the trend line, which made me need to go back and compile more data because ultimately, I needed to see more years without a COVID influence. First, let's look at the last three years. It looks like 2023 is going to follow the 2021 trend as it starts to dip with the month of May being the peak. Even with the dip, it's still a respectable showing. Now, look at the years from 2017 through 2023. In general, it looks like the condo market peaks out in some years in May and then others in June, then sees a retreat of pricing that then levels off in the fall. It was a bit of a shocker, but when I looked deeper into the data, I became a lot less worried. So everything still looks good here. Yes, sales are down, but it's not led to a surge of inventory. Inventory remains at a record low. This market, like the single family market, remains very competitive in a lot of areas, but it's definitely not as strong as the single family market. And now for my very quick shameless plug. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home, then reach out to me today as I would be honored to help guide you through the process. Now, on to the multifamily market. Ha, huh, this one was a real shocker. The multifamily market has been sucking wind at the end of 2022 and pretty much for all 2023. 
In June of 2023, we saw 526 multifamily properties sell for an average sales price of $796,000. The 526 units sold is 28.2% below the activity that we saw in June of 2022. That is a major improvement from last month's 36% decline or even April's 41.3% decline. This pickup of activity is great news in the multifamily market. Does this mean that the market is starting to normalize? The year-over-year -year increase in the average sales price was everything but normal, but we're going to get to that. But first, let's look at the inventory levels. We currently have 612 multifamily properties on the market. This 612 is down from last month when we had 636 properties on the market, but also it's a new all-time low for the month of June. We are about 3.7 times below the inventory levels that we saw back in June 2012. Meanwhile, inventory levels are down by 47% when compared to June of 2022. You could really visualize how this month's pricing data is an outlier. This month actually exceeded the peak in pricing that we saw back in March of 2022 for multifamilies. But check this out. For the month of June, we saw a jump of 9.3% in pricing year over year. This month was such a good month that it took the year-to-date average pricing that was down by 2.4% for the first five months of the year to up by 0.3% in the first six months of 2023. The loop has been thrown. The month of June is made for an interesting last six months of 2023. We paid for the entire seat, but it looks like we're going to be sitting on the edge. Want to talk about your personal real estate goals? My information, it's in the description below. I've always loved to talk about real estate. So whether you're looking to buy in the next nine or 90 days, then I would love to chat with you and just find out more about your real estate goals and what you're looking to accomplish. And if you're thinking about possibly selling, then we can help you traditionally, or we can even offer you a cash offer on your house for a seamless and stress-free sales process. No matter what your situation is, we can help you get it done. You can also visit us at youtuberealestateagent.com and fill in your information, and then I'm going to reach out to you. Questions or comments about the market data? Well, then drop me a line in that comment section below. You take the time to watch the video, so I'm always going to take the time to respond. Until next time.